Okay, everybody. We live in very complicated days. Very complicated. Well, just in case you did not know, today is a, uh, for those uh, days, it really is. Today is a day. In case you're not familiar with the Middle East, it's um, active right now and will soon be highly active. We have a change in events in the Middle East. I know, first and foremost, as being a uh, believer in Christ, Israel is a very touchy subject to most. It should be. It should be. Why? Because it's God's designated land. That's why it is. It's also a very contentious piece of property in the Middle East right now. And it is responsible. It is being deemed responsible for the unrest in the Middle East, unfortunately. This is by most, if not all, nations. Now we have a different problem. They know an outbreak of military movements will take place here shortly. They already know it. So an approval just went out, which is why I came on air. In combat, the scale of a war is often gauged by the approval of what can and cannot be used. The approval of what can and cannot be used is an international matter because it affects all nations. And usually, the munitions cut off, so to speak, is utilized. In other words, normally they won't allow munitions above a specific grade or a specific uh, explosive yield. In this case, the big boys have been approved. They're doing this just in case, right? Just in case, and here's what this means, just in case, there's an, um, they've underestimated Iran, that they've underestimated the coalition of forces against Israel, just in case. Also, Russia is in, uh, has been in high talks with Iran uh, today, all day today, all day. So you have a literal divide of nations in conversations. Uh, today it would be good if negotiations were taking place, but that's not what's happening. Right? It's not what's happening. Even if there were some type of truce, you would still have proxy elements that would take revenge upon Israel at any given moment. This will increase uh, the, these approvals going out. They're going to increase your traffic, lots of air traffic. You'll see no-fly zones. You'll see naval movements. Like if you're one of those and you track um, uh, the uh, ship idents or aircraft idents, you'll start to see that uh, here in the USA, in certain Air Force bases, they have uh, patrols out right now. The big boys are at high altitude. Uh, they are fully employed tonight, meaning they're going to be flying a long time. Refuelers are up also, so that uh, everybody can be on station should they need to uh, do a preempt. Now, Having said that, guys, a preemptive strike is a real issue tonight. It's going to be a real possibility in, uh, in a small area of time. Right? In general, we see an escalation. This escalation will trickle over to the USA. Unlike any other time in combat, right, where a war was normally contained in a very specific area, this time... We have too many nations with long-range capabilities. As a consequence or a result of that, the USA has no choice but to take steps to begin to shield the east and west coasts and some other places. You would need aerial shielding of any incoming missiles. But also, as this escalates in the Middle East, and hear me close on this. Should it look like 
the Western forces have the upper hand. If it looks like Israel has the upper hand, every single last one of you here in the USA must be vigilant. I hope you're hearing me. You must be vigilant. When war breaks out in the Middle East, be extremely cautioned here in the USA. Be cautioned about large crowds. Things of that nature. Be wise in what you do. Check on your family. Make sure you know where they are. Right? Make sure. Please do not underestimate if higher munitions are being utilized in the Middle East, don't underestimate just how many nations would be involved. Those of you in the UK, your vigilance is required now. Be watchful. You are by no means out of the woods and you're right in the hornet's nest. In fact, the UK is more of a target than France and Germany. They are. So it's going to require us to be sober. Not so much excited, but sober. And it will require vigilance right here in the USA. From the inside. There are lots of people in these countries who are not what they appear to be. They're simply not. You cannot tell them by race. You cannot tell them by nationality. You can't. But they're not what they seem to be. You all know about Jade Helm. And one of the keynotes coming out of Jade Helm should be mastering the human domain. The human domain. Curious expression, don't you think? Mastering the human domain. That's an absolute and total iron fist control of everything here in the USA. You already saw the components put up, electricity, water, communications, power. Right? You've seen that. What you have not seen are the aerial interruptions, communications, disruptors. They sound like big washing machines in the atmosphere. You've heard some of it by way of the trumpets in the atmosphere and mechanical noises from time to time in the atmosphere. That you have heard. Many people have heard these things. Not all those uh, trumpet sounds were uh, what you thought they were. Those disruptors turn on. It will stop your, it will stop wireless communication almost instantly, wherever they apply it. Your, your, your wireless mouse will not work with your computer. Everything will be disrupted. As it raises, because it will be a net that will raise, and they'll begin to issue that over certain areas of where they suspect resistance or something of that nature, or where they suspect terrorism. Now, this is where you have to be careful. We live in an environment here in the USA where things are very divisive. Please have an understanding that the enemy is already in the camp. We're not talking about uh, good old American folks. That's not what we're talking about. You're talking about people who are essentially criminals, who are loyal to external forces in the Middle East. They are loyal to Iran. They're loyal to the Houthis. They're loyal to Hezbollah. They're loyal to any movement and any nation who would hate Israel. And they're right here in this nation. They will combine they will begin to do things. And once they start to uh, make their move, people are going to be hard-pressed to realize what happened. As much as I hate to say it, this blind pride we've been operating by this foolish pride is going to cost us. Because most have been preparing for the wrong thing. At any rate, 
This calls for sobriety. It does. Vigilance. Prayer. Lots of prayer. Especially for your families. You may not be able to save the world. But you can cover those you love around you. And that covering is real. It will make the difference. Between the anguish. And a continuation of someone. In life going another day. Prayer is real. Your father's hand is real. It is. And whatever he permits, he does so in a perfection of judgment. Not error. He does not make a decision based on emotions or blind pride. But perfection of judgment. Whatever outcome he deems, we will have. What you have to deal with on any given day, you're going to have to deal with. It's also time to stand up spiritually. Even stand up for those who won't stand up spiritually. Intercede for as many as possible. See, because when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, they're gonna, there's going to be um, a time when you find yourself among those that are like yourself. You're going to be far and few in between. There are scriptures which indicate that very, very few are left on the earth. Are you guys aware of that, those scriptures? That the inhabitants of the earth are few is what it will say. There are scriptures which indicate all the armies of the earth are going to be destroyed. You guys aware of that? I'll say it again. All the armies of the earth will be destroyed. How can that be? There's new classifications of weapons. They will be coming out. No doubt they're ready to use at any given moment. They leave no trace of anything. They are deadly, worse than nuclear, worse than chemical, worse than biological. Those weapons within themselves are an absolute abomination of life on Earth, period. Because they can break down life too fast. Get yourselves ready. And it is ironic, the storms that are forming in the Gulf. Do you guys know there are 15 low-pressure systems now in the USA? There are 12 high-pressure systems in the USA. And then I find that to be extraordinary. That's extraordinary. And for every low-pressure system, that would seem to develop, there's a high-pressure system offsetting it, following it closely. If those high-pressure areas go away, low pressure takes over. The entire southern half of the USA is going to be underwater very quickly. That means a lot of rain, just like what happened in Carolina. Imagine two feet of rain in the Gulf states. Just imagine that. Those who those meteorologists who have been tracking some of these low pressure systems, they're hard pressed to come up with some pattern in the chaos that has formed. It is unnatural. What you're seeing is unnatural. It is unusual at best. Unusual. But then again, so is the situation all over the earth that it is. So guys, listen, as you see an escalation, right, uh, in, in things in the Middle East, and I'm sure you guys know where to get coverage from, even I'll cover some of what's happening in the Middle East. I normally don't do that to a degree unless it includes certain elements, and so far it has not included certain elements. When it does include certain elements, I'll be very active as far as updates are concerned. I have a different concern than most people. And I'll say so prematurely. If it gets real rough, that's when I become much nicer. But I'm not so uh, ambiguous when it's rough. When it's chaotic, I think that people deserve to know what they're facing.
at any rate. Somebody said, well, a second, well, if we have in our lifetime, if we have a second object take up residence outside or in the orbit of the moon, yes, it will mess with the tidal waves. It, it's going to mess with everything. In fact, they estimate with any inbound satellite that will take up orbit around the Earth, the wind speeds would increase around 40 miles an hour average. So imagine the average day, if, if you're in a place where the wind does not blow, it will be 40 miles an hour. Add that on top of higher wind speeds and storms. So instead of 50 miles an hour, you're going to have um, 90, right? Instead of uh, your, your, your 15 mile an hour norm, you'll have a lot more than that. You'll be dealing with uh, wind speeds that will devastate our infrastructure, your rooftops, everything else. Back to what's happening in the Middle East and escalation is what we're waiting for. A preempt is very real. That order can be given at any time. Coordination is quite fast in, during these hours. Many leaders are in discussions about what steps to take next. And there is a very real fear of some nuclear usage. Do you not know if right now, if some deal was made with Iran through one of the nuclear powers in the Middle East already, right? That it would only be a matter of hours before the ultimate would take place. But keep in mind, these guys are going to operate by their faith, period. They've been doing so since day one. It drives everything they do. It drives their ideology with their hatred of Israel. These nuclear countries in the Middle East who have nuclear weapons that are not part of the Western Alliance, listen to me, they already said if something ever broke out and it dealt with their faith, they're going to side with the countries of their faith. They already said it does not matter if they're Sunni or Shia. They're going to side. That means you're going to see a you're going to see the Muslim world become one, and they will not hesitate to, with calculated precision, strike Israel. But hear me on this: you guys do understand. In order to fulfill a prophecy, a Muslim prophecy, in order to do what their God desires them to do which is to destroy Israel, do you really understand what that means? First of all, in order for them to hit Israel, they have to have us burning. By way of their faith, the USA must be set on fire, and then they can destroy Israel. They cannot destroy Israel unless the USA is on fire. It's starting to get it. There's no way they're going to focus all their firepower towards Israel and not have us burning. We must be on fire. So if at any time they really do plan a strike against Israel, that's going to be notable. They will have planted some devastating things within this nation. That takes time. Not that I'm profiling. There are a lot of people loyal <coughs> to the Muslim faith who are employed here in the USA. They're employed all over the place. Nobody really is going to do anything unless that faith war is declared. Once it is a faith war, conventional means of warfare are out of the window because they are encouraged to do anything and everything to subvert. You got to hear me on this. They have something called a bunch of um, external writings. It's called the Hadith. Now the Bible has a witness. The Hadith does not. And in the Hadith, some of those writings tell 
their people that in that time, in that struggle, to do anything and everything. Deceit and everything is permissible. To commit those things for the sake of the end result, which is what? The absolute destruction of Israel and America. Please keep those in mind. Because it's real that when something happens, even you are going to get around those you're comfortable with. You know what that means? Now, you may not like this, but I'm just telling you the facts. When something happens in the world, it happens all the time that people get around those they are comfortable with. If it happens to be, for example, let me give you an example. Say there were five black people on the left, 20 white white uh, Caucasians on the right, right? Native Americans, you have 20 of those in the rear, and, and 40 Asians in your forward, right? If something ever broke out and it began to cause stress, the first thing all of you are going to do is you're going to go and group yourselves with those you have a comfort with. Do you hear what I'm telling you? People do it all the time. You, you would never run to a group you're uncomfortable with. In other words, when a high stress period comes, you're going to go to those of your own base. Whatever you consider a base, that's where you're going. Whoever you're comfortable with, that's where you're going. It does not mean you're racist. That's not what it means. It means you have a comfort, you have a place of comfort that when you're in trouble, you're going to go around those you, can, you have an established trust with. And in the absence of knowing people, there's something else that people have learned to do. They do it every single time, and they don't even know they're doing it half the time. But it's natural. It's natural. So never mistake that for some racist act. It's natural. It's very natural. People go around those they have a comfort with. Because when stress comes, we always seek to go back home. Whatever reminds you of home, that's what you're going back to. Now, home does not necessarily mean with your parents. That's not what it means. Home is that place that you can actually exhale in. Home is that place where you found the comfort of others around you. That's what home is. Home is not where you're, you know, where you grew up and all this. Not where home is. Home. Home is where you have found the greatest amount of comfort in your life. That's where home is. And you will seek that place out. And for most people, in the absence of finding the right conditions, they find the right people they're comfortable with. You're not going to go around people you cannot communicate with, you cannot relate to. So I'm telling you, don't mistake that for racism, because that's going to become a real problem. Also, keep your mind on biblical things. But do it in this way. See, most people will jump to the extreme and say everything is going to be fulfilled today. That's what they'll say. You know what everything gradually moves to, right? You've been on earth for a few days, and so you know how people respond to things. You also know that troubles come and go. Troubles will always come and go. What you may not know is all the troubles that have been in the world culminate in the fulfillment of prophecy. You're starting to see an escalation of those prophecies being fulfilled. When you begin to see things happen all at one time, just like Jesus said, and you begin to see these things, he didn't say when you saw them all fully formed, he said when you begin to see these things, know that the desolation of Jerusalem is nigh, know that these prophecies are going to be fulfilled. Have an understanding of that so that you understand people so that you can still help those who need help, pray for those who need help. Be sincere behind all men and all women. For example, in my case, I already know there are going to be some, uh, the Lord always has me work with most impossible groups, with the worst groups on earth. He does. And so when something like that happens, I'm the impossible one that goes into an impossible crowd to do the impossible. 
It's always worked with me that way. To go right into the camp of the hostile folks. And eventually they learn peace. You'd be surprised how many people do not want conflict. Most people enter into conflict to survive. If you can understand that, you can communicate with just about anybody. People do what they do to survive. Criminals, in a lot of cases, do what they do to survive. They know no other way. If you can remember that, you'll be useful in those times. Fully employed. You won't falter in your own faith. But these days are coming quickly. You can have a lot of people who run for their weapons. Many with dilemmas. What they don't know is the landscape of America is going to change with the first missiles that hit this land. Everything will change. Many will not know what plans to make. Do you guys know that it's a, the highways get designators when that happens? Certain highways are going to be totally blacked out, which means you cannot use them. Other highways are going to be split in four or five pieces. There'll be no straight line to anywhere. You're going to have to go through checkpoints. So the way you travel is going to change. If you think you're going to ride, you know, 81 or I-5 or something like that all the way to your destination, no, that's not the case. They will purposely put interrupters there so that you have to deviate your travels. You have to turn left or right, get on another highway. They will redirect everything. So they have total control of the movement of people. Most don't know that either. Anyway, this is what you'll see more and more as things continue to go forward. Now, despite the noise you may hear tonight, this I know, I'm pretty confident that what we see happening are the developmental stages, bigger things. Even if a nuclear, low-yield low nuclear device is used within the next seven days, it's still the initial, the initial parts. Hmm. It's, it's all in the initial parts. I do know this, though. And I can't help but to trust it because everything continues to move in that direction. We're going to be missing 70,000 folks. And another 20 million are going to follow all at one time. That's going to be pretty uh, odd. Pretty strange. Do you guys remember what you used to do in, in uh, before um, 2012? Everybody had their bug out bag and everything else going, right? Let me ask you guys something. Let me see if you have these items in your bug out bag. This is because people normally forget these. And they make a real difference in your life. You ready? Do you have toenail clippers? Anybody? Toenail clippers? Do you have coffee filters? Even if you don't drink coffee, do you have coffee filters? Do you have at least four wrapped toothbrushes? You know, that can mean life or death, right? A simple toothbrush can mean life or death. Hmm. Do you have Listerine? You need, if you buy Listerine, put it in an airtight vacuum bag if you can. But make sure you have some Listerine. If you can find it, make sure you have some Bactine. If you can find it, make sure you have one bottle of Motrin. Make sure that. Also, if you can find it, make sure you have at least a bottle of dihydramine. You know what that is? 
It's been a drill. You know what that's good for? These kids that we have today, right? They've not been exposed to certain elements. You get them out to a different environment where the toxicities change. Some of these kids won't survive that. Benadryl can alleviate their symptoms very quickly. Very simply and quickly. Especially with small babies. Rashes break out. All sorts of things happen. Benadryl can alleviate those symptoms. People who suffer from anxiety. Benadryl can alleviate those symptoms. Just so you know. There's a host of things, simple things, very cheap things that people forget. They get out there in the stuff, so to speak. They find themselves uh, being equipped inadequately. If you do have, if you get to stay where you are and the lights go out, now it's a known fact that if something breaks out, they're going to control the electricity. If you, in your home, if you have power when nobody else does, make sure you have the proper coverage on your windows that no one can see that you have lights. That's important. You're going to have to exercise light discipline and not let anybody know that you have lights. That's just so. Just get your mind in the right direction. Also, many of you will have 36 hours to go from where you are to somewhere else. You will not be able to stay home. You won't. Remember that. Remember that. And hopefully you have uh, water, maybe about three or four. Life straws are important at that point. You can always extract water from you know, rainfall and water that's out there. But keep in mind, things are going to be contaminated and canned foods won't work. Canned food does not work. It just doesn't work. Sorry, it doesn't. Canned food is no good once uh, certain atmospheric elements begin to float around. Those masks from COVID-19, I hope you have some. That can be the difference of life and death. See, ash is starting to build in the upper atmospheres. Some of the explosions that take place in the Middle East, some of the fallout has already reached America. Do you know that? So people have been noticing a buildup of black, dirty stuff coming out of the atmosphere. Some people are unfortunate enough to get that in their eyes. So if you guys don't, keep those things in mind. Keep them in mind. The best bottle of water is little tiny water bottles. Little tiny ones. Just a few. Last thing. Do you guys have a way to start fire without striking a match? Hmm? Anybody, we're not talking about uh, rubbing during the uh, friction fires or anything like that. No, we're not talking about that. Do you have a way of starting a fire without matches? You'll need that. You don't want to start a fire with a match. You can smell that from a quarter mile away. That you can. You ever heard of a plasma lighter? Anybody? A plasma lighter will last you for about... A year and a half. And it works by a small arc that's formed you can barely hear. It's very high frequency when it starts. And you can set, you know, kindling on fire with that and start a fire in the first, you know, start a fire with that. They're very effective. Very effective. They also work when everything is wet. They do. Fire becomes essential especially in survival, camping out, things of that nature for several reasons. But it becomes a center. And if, you, if, if, if the USA is under some very strange conditions and you have no other choice, 
but to try and get away from the area that you're in because it's becoming too hostile. You may need those things. You may. Also, keep in mind, there are going to be a lot of people on their feet, not in vehicles. They're not going to be in vehicles. All right, but you guys get that notion, which means, which means, try not, try to get a good picture on the Middle East. Keep the Bible your center focus when dealing with those situations. And please understand, we don't know when, but it's, but at some point, a breakout will happen, and it will appear that Jerusalem is under siege. They have live cams in Israel. It's a very good way to gauge some of the troubles in the Middle East. The trouble that will affect you is when Jerusalem is taken. That will directly affect you. All right. Any questions? Yes, I'll put some of that on the site. Published quite a few things. Somebody says, I have nothing. Well, don't worry. You know what? Here's what I believe. I believe the Lord makes a way. Listen, I'm a person who lives by faith. I do. I live by faith. And I know this for a fact because I've seen cities fall. I've seen towns fall. I've seen people who have prepared all their life and they were not alive to enjoy the protections they set up. I know that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. So one of the main things you want to do is be one of the just. People have set up all sorts of things. And guess what? Some of you will occupy what they set up. That's why you should never get angry at somebody else making preparations to save themselves. I've seen that too many times. I've seen rich and powerful people not be there to enjoy whatever they made, but somebody else walks into their camp and it sustains them throughout an entire campaign. I've seen whole areas have to get up and leave their homes, and nobody counted on that. I know for a fact here in the USA, there are certain plans where you cannot take a vehicle. You'll have to take what's on your back, and you'll have to go. Period. Movement orders will go out if things get bad here in the USA. Period. I've also seen people perish to defend their own ideology of what they thought the end would be. My advice to anybody is to be ready to listen to your Father in Heaven. Be ready. Now, the list we'll have here at COT comes from experience, from being out in the stuff, so to speak, and wishing you had certain items, right? Like chapstick or something to that nature. Then when you don't have it, so, uh, living for a year out in the elements, well, that can become quite the uh, conundrum if you're not prepared for it. There's small things you can do that will make a world of difference for you and everybody around you. Small things. There are adjustments you can make in your life because most people are going to have an issue with eating. They can't take blandness. They can't do that. Some items people carry are going to be totally ruined. Some polymer plastics will begin to dissolve in, in the product itself. See, there are many factors to look at. How many of you know about that, about the polymers of plastic, how they will dissolve? Like if you, if you had an item, say you were in a certain area, and everything you have was encased in plastic, I can tell you right now that plastic is going to turn a rust color, and it will melt into whatever you have in that plastic. It will become useless, contaminated. You won't be able to use it. Things like that happen. Things that folks just don't think about. There's so many considerations, which is why we need the Lord to guide us 
whatever we need. You may be in an area, right, that's totally moist all the time. In that case, you're going to need a whole different set of supplies versus somebody who's in a dry area. And it really takes the guidance of the Most High because I've seen, listen, without the Lord, your survival gear is not going to work. It's not. It's going to be in vain. The Lord has already told us this. We know a dark kingdom is rising, so it's not going to be like the movies. A dark kingdom will rise. And for all those who are displaced, they're going to be welcomed. They're going to have their utopia. But we will go through a transition period. And it's making it through that transition period you have to think of. Right? Think of that. As for me, I'm not thinking about staying alive. I want to be out there to help folks. I've learned a long time ago, if your heart's in the right place with the Lord, not in the right place, but in the right place with the Lord, he'll always supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. That I know for a fact. But it will not be like the movies. The movies can never cover what really happens. They can't. Folks, you guys stay vigilant for each other and utilize the resources of those Christians uh, that are out there. Yeah, I do that. So I said, I need oxygen. Machine COPD will stop me right away. Well, I don't want to. There are certain things I can't say out loud. I can't say that out loud. When I was in the Gulf the first time, when the uh, oil fire started, right, I drowned with oil in my lungs. I drowned. And it caused problems long after that was over. Now, taking medical advice based on research is one thing. Sometimes it's excellent. Sometimes it's not. But again, I'll tell you, the Lord will guide you in things that nobody will ever tell you. And when he starts guiding you, if you are faithful enough to do it, there's nothing you can have on this earth that's not reversible. Do you hear me? Everything is reversible. Everything is. So in essence, you can be healed from any condition that you have. You can. You're not going to learn that medically. You're going to have to push towards righteousness beyond your own barriers sometimes so that you can experience what the Lord can do. Doubt often comes when you don't know how the Lord's going to deliver you. Well, let me share this with you. Just because you don't know how he can deliver you does not mean he will not deliver you. All too often, why would the Lord do something that you are aware of? Hmm? In the Bible, it tells us something. That the Lord will do above and beyond what you're able to ask or think. That means what he will ultimately do for you, you don't have the mental capacity to come up with. That's what that means. While you're thinking of, uh, you know, shielding a cup with a Band-Aid, the Lord doesn't use Band-Aids. And he's not even looking at the wound. Think about that. So he can heal the wholeness of you without ever touching or applying anything to that specific wound. That's our Lord. He does above and beyond what you're able to ask or think. So what he'll do, you're not able to come up with. The end result, you're not able to imagine, nor have you seen it. You're just not able to. You'll always be blown away by his results. Always. The question is not, can he heal you? He will. The question is, can you follow the tiny bit of instruction he always gives before he heals? Can he? That's the question. Jesus said that. Um, he said if we would obey. If we would just obey, 
that outcome is sure. It is sure. And if evil people can begin to utilize authorities that are given by Christ, how much more could you? Hmm? If people will go to him and say they cast out demons in his name, but yet in the end he'll tell them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. That's an evil person, right? Utilizing the authorities of the kingdom. If they can do that, those who have a, a not-so-good motive, how much more are you capable of? If you were to just slightly trust in the Lord, hmm? Somebody said that question, Michael. You said showed you your dream, your death. Oh yeah, he did. He showed me an end of me. How do you know if you're going to be a martyr? The Lord will let you know that when you, when the Lord has you to go through something, right? It's going to cost you. He'll let you know because he will qualify. He qualifies everybody he calls. You're going to be prepped. You're going to be conditioned. You're going to be able to do whatever he calls you to do. You're born, you're made for that. For whatever he called you for, you've been made for. So if you have to, you know, if you have an unfortunate passing at a specific time, he will condition you to be able to endure. He will. And you're not going to have a problem with it. You're not going to be frightened of it. It's not going to frighten you because he will have you conditioned. But everybody is not like that. Everybody is not called like that. They're just not. If you are called like that, if you are called to, uh, you know, have, have somewhat of a complicated demise, then in your character, it shows in your character through humility mostly, shows in your character as you live your life. I've only known humble vessels to be able to endure certain things at the end. Only humble vessels. I've never seen a proud, forceful, loud, right? Uh, any, that, that archetype just doesn't work. And it never has. It's always been the humble ones who will trust the Lord to the very end. See, when you trust the Lord, you take less and less into your own hands, don't you? It's when you don't trust the Lord, you end up acting irrationally, hatefully, angrily, full of anxieties, all these different things. When you trust the Lord, you're calm. You may know your death is coming, but you know the Lord has planned it all out. Not operating by the spirit of fear. Right? So so there's a there's an archetype to those who are called to do such things. He'll prepare you. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. He'll let you know. When it said, I had a dream where the enemy held my severed head. Did you uh, go back to the Lord and ask him about that? A second, third, fourth time? Does that frighten you? It does not frighten Listen, if the enemy killed me, cut, chopped my head off, right? That's nothing. That really is nothing. That really is nothing. Death is nothing. Quick death is even, is, is, is nothing. It's nothing. It really isn't. If somebody got beheaded, they're not going to feel a thing. They're going to be gone quickly. It's nothing. Nothing. But the Lord showed you that you had to walk a different path, period. That you had to suffer some things. That you would be without what everybody else has commonly. And you would sit on the outside while everybody else was in arm's reach and was getting everything. That could mess with you. It could. Trust in the Lord always. Trust in him always. Feel like, you know, he's got you. He really does. He, he's had you all this time, hasn't he? Huh? All this time, he has sustained you. 
He's kept you for this time. There's no need to have fear. But be focused. Be focused on obedience, on obeying whatever it is he has given to you. Do it wholeheartedly. And seek his guidance every step of the way. As far as death is concerned, take no thought of that. Let him be the governor of life and death for you. And take no thought of it. Spend your time obeying. Spend your time interceding. Spend your time to be a vessel of the word of God. Not to be known for it, but to be effective for everybody you come in contact with. Do that. And stay vigilant. That season that we all knew was coming is soon to begin. Somebody said, okay, so if plastic doesn't work and canned food doesn't work, what do we do to put our food in? Well, that's why you, you need guidance from the Lord because if you're in a certain can, environment, plastic will not work. In other environments, canned foods don't work. They don't work. You have to be guided because you don't know where you're going to end up. You could end up in a place where plastics work, but metals do not. You could end up in a place where metals work, but plastics do not. You don't know where you're going to end up. So what you have to do is you have to learn to listen to Christ Jesus. Listen to his guidance. He's the only one that can tell you what you need to survive, what he will unleash on the earth. Hmm? He's the only one that can tell you that. He knows what tomorrow is. Listen, tomorrow belongs to your Father in heaven. He knows everything that tomorrow holds. He does. We do not, nor does anybody else. If you can trust in him, he will guide you the right way. If you trust in mankind, you're going to be upset. You're going to be upset. Now, normal survival tactics work in normal conditions. I'm trying to tell you the conditions we're about to undergo are going to be nothing close to normal. They won't be close to normal. They're not going to make sense to a great many people. They won't. But they are coming to trust in him to be guided. Whatever it is, whatever he gives you to do, do it. Do it wholeheartedly and regret nothing. Can you do that? Learn to listen to him. Learn to hear him in the tiny things. Follow him in the tiny things. And he'll guide you. He will. He really will guide you. I'll give you a scenario. There's probably a rich person out there who has prepared just about everything. They don't know that they won't be able to enjoy it. Somebody who believes in the most time will likely stumble across that place and have it all to themselves. They'll probably end up guiding others to that same location. Isn't that something? So these people who are prideful, highest, right? They're doing things, making preparations. What they don't know is the Lord controls tomorrow. So they can be making direct preparations for you. And you don't know that. See, those of you who don't have anything to take care of yourselves, the Lord is going to be your provision. He will always be your provision. Those of you who think you have all your preparations made and you're proud of it, I'm telling you, you could end up being separated from everything you ever prepared for. So what you what what the focal point here is to learn to hear the Lord. And then small things begin to obey him. So when the big things come, it's going to be natural to you. Start trusting him in the small things. So when the big things come, you'll have assurance. While everybody else is standing in fear, you'll stand in confidence. And having stood for the word, the word will soon stand for you. All right, folks. I'm not going to hold you over. I wanted to give you guys an update. I'm going to leave uh, two of the players on just in case. 
just in case Russia is, uh, if they're giving threats and the Western Alliance has given approval for some big boys. And so that could, that could, uh, you know, result in the usage of these allied nations like Iran and, and Russia. It may give them an excuse to do the unthinkable. They already know of the communications of a preemptive strike. They already know of the escalations of the Middle East. I'm telling you, the situation that we're in right now is so different from any other situation we've ever been in. They already know there are about four to five more waves of compromised devices out there. It's a very different situation. It is. Keep those people in Israel lifted up in your prayers. Keep your families lifted up as well. All those you know, keep lifting them up in prayer. Thank God for his mercies up until this point. Thank God for his guidance up until this point. Then honor the Lord through your own personal statement of trust towards him. You know in the Bible when it says it's impossible to please God without faith. Show him faith. If you love him, if he's your father, and show him of your faith. So. Oops. I'm going to leave you guys for the moment. Mixler is going to be left up. Of course, the OT is still going to be operational. Everything else is going to be operational. Two of the players will, will um, they'll go silent. But they'll still be on. And I might be back on here a little later. God bless each of you. God bless you. I, I, again, I do not perceive any major incident happening, even though there may be an outbreak in, in uh, the coming hours. I don't perceive the outbreak happening. Not yet. But I'll tell you, we're close. We're so close. God bless you guys. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. And that means possibly uh, sometime after midnight. That's what that means. Certainly tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow, too. We'll have a big Q&A tomorrow and some prayer time tomorrow and catch up on some events. We'll do that uh, before Pastor Paul comes on. Right? And if I can, I'm, I'm just trying to get the audio set up for Angela. Because she asks uh, some pretty good questions. That she does. But we'll see how that works out if I can get a hold of her. God bless each of you. I'll see you next time right here at COT.